G'day and welcome to the front of us. I'm XQ, joined today by Agrid. How you doing, buddy? I'm pretty good. And pretty our, good. Can't complain too much. And our voice in the void is Sten. How you doing, Sten? Oh, doing all right. I still have hair on my head. So Sten um, actually comes with this rather a large fleet. Um, and our solution today is the one that is rarest of the rare. Agrid has pulled a second one out of his hat, uh, rolling into a pack. So this is the, like, for the longest time, I thought this was bullshit. Uh, but yeah, it just needs to prove me wrong. But it does seem to be a solution for those at the, well, as I called it, Agra, the, the, the top end mm -hmm. of town. Um, so, yeah, so we're going to go through that today. So it's it's not like a normal fleet. So we're kind of going to be more looking at where we normally look at individual ships. We're essentially going, this is a pack. This is a pack. This is a pack. So this is a pack moving episode is, is, is how I would phrase it. Would you kind of agree with that, Agrid, or It's a, a Pac-Man episode, yes. That's yes. Right. Whopper, whopper, whopper. Right, okay. With that, we'll kick it over to the browser. Um, so yeah, this is quite big. Um, and the layout's not the neatest because there's not a way to lay these out uh, neatly individually, but the way we've got it laid out at the moment uh, is this explains all the different packs. So, um, Stan, do you want to talk us through this this first one, this this big pack over here? That would be the uh, <clears throat> reason for all the troubles. Basically, that's the uh, Wing Commanders pack from right when they redesigned it in the start of 2015. Mm. And um, yeah. I think your big appeal from memory was the m idris m this is a what was it out yeah. six thousand dollars when we had a look at individually six thousand dollars on the gray market yes yeah so so it, it's a very hard yeah. ship to obtain but um it's something you want to keep so oh, yeah it, this will yeah, be the, the m is m is the big thing this, this was the thing that was giving you the most heartache wasn't it how, yeah. how do i mm -hmm. how do i consolidate yeah. and get rid of all this dross yeah. and yet keep my keep my idris m yeah and then I think the next step is we had all these smaller packs up here up the top. So we've got like little small things like 100 eyes and I can't even make out what that vehicle is. Uh, is that a rock or wait? Is it me? Yeah. yeah, it's a rock. Yeah, that, yeah. That, that was one I CC'd in for yeah. messing around with and, currently. You know, questionable li life choices like this vehicle pack. I was like rolling my <laughs> eyes going, what is wrong with it? <laughs> this is like 700 and something dollars. And I was like, what the? Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, so you want to tell us? I, I wasn't exactly paying attention to vehicle yeah. pricing in game at the time, and uh, well, I wanted to have some options to uh, and, talk around with, if you will. Yeah, and in fairness, you uh, did say right. straight away. Yeah, this, this pack. Yeah. this pack's going. Yeah. So yeah. Um. What about things like this 100 eye pack? What? Why would you get little ships like this when you've got such bigger ships? What was your kind of thought process on the? And I'll I'll do the same thing with the razor. Like, what was your thought process with? Like you really uh, combination. Racing, well, a combo between liking the ships aesthetically and you know, kind of just as a little throwaway run around, right. and as potential CCU options. You know, uh, so is that a similar thing with the spirit, like the aesthetics and stuff? It's, you know, spirits. Yeah, I like them. They're also kind of fill that lower end uh, kind of general use sort of thing for me. Yeah, yep. and. Well, I you know once they come in game, I'll kind of figure out better if I want to keep them or if I want to dispense with them and use the store credit for something else. Yeah, I, I think yeah. me and Agrid keep coming back to I think people are going to be kind of shocked about how large these are. I think that's mm. going to be when they come in game, people are going to go, oh shit, they're that, quite big. They're bigger um, than I thought. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, that 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 to me yeah. is their detraction. Anyway, all right, so. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead, if you want to say something, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I was just going to say that they're somewhat close to where the freelancers are for me. And I'm a, I, I'd am rather enjoy the freelancers. They but... are literally direct competition yeah. to the freelancer. They are a couple mm -hmm. of freelancer competitors. Uh, but they are bigger. And I happen to like Crusader, yeah, so. And they're bigger than both of those. That's the problem. All right, um, mm -hmm. the Hercules series minus the C1. So what was the drill appeal to these ones? Are you just really into cargo and bombing uh -huh. or...? Well, A2 is basically a AC-130 on steroids. Yeah. I don't think I need to explain that too much. They're and very the similar, M2, to, very similar yeah. to this last package as well, so mm -hmm. double up. Yeah. yeah, 
Yeah. Yeah, well, double up, strictly in speaking, but for me, I like to choose the size ship for what size job I want to use. Like, I don't want to pull out a C2 or M2 when I just need to run, say, 70 or 80 SU of cargo somewhere. Yeah. It, you know? it does tie into what people often say is first world problems. Um, yes. When you have the resources to have options, if you will. And, and you so, always want to yeah. take out a, a C2 or a Carrick. Sometimes you do just want to mm -hmm. take out that small Aurora or that Cutlass. Yep. And, and when you've got them there, you can. And the top respawn end of town, time. get respawn timers, yeah. anything as well. Yep. Yes. And the top end. Oh, of that's town, that's yep. the reason for some of the choices I go into for the um, where this ends up. Yep. yep. All right. Um, and then obviously this is a, an explorer pack. I'm assuming looks like an explorer. Yeah. Pack. The the original explorer pack. The yeah. Carrick Terrapin Dragonfly. and uh, Dragonfly. yeah, a little little dragonfly in there. You don't see this and anymore. it's yeah it's a it's a carrick i really like him mm -hmm. just as a kind of like a daily thing as well as potential for kind of long range mm -hmm. sort of recon sort of things for fleet ops right, and giving it, <laughs> maybe a little exploring as and given that that carrot pack is a is an early pack it's actually mm -hmm. it, it's one of those packs you're going i've got a good saving on this pack compared to very again so it, 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 it's giving you you know, it, it it adds complication when you're trying to condense a fluid. Mm -hmm. All right, so these three big yeah, ones Well, when here... you're looking at something that was, yeah, yeah half off. Yeah. All right, so these three big ones here um, are basically three ones that you want to keep that are individual, yeah? So mm -hmm. the Kraken, the Pioneer, and the, I believe, is that an E or a D? A D. A D. Yeah, I thought That's that. a D. Yeah. Which I, I can kind of, when we do the other, or the end of it, we can kind of say what I or do with it. I keep a yeah. D, but it kind of moves. Yeah. So, yeah, you're giving the game away. Stop. <laughs> mm. All right. And so this last group is individual yeah. ships that uh, essentially you want and don't want, but these are ones that we could work with, essentially, yeah? Mm-hmm. Much like the uh, the smaller packs and stuff like that. So basically, outside this Wing Commander pack, as you might have seen, this is the pack that we are rolling into, uh, because our main aim is to keep this um, this ship here. I think you also gained LTI on an 890 jump, and there was some other ship in here yeah. as well. Oh, the Phoenix. I think you brought the Phoenix up at one point too, wasn't it? Yeah, the the Phoenix is the second ship in there that uh, was. It, not as big a sticking point as the M for me, but yep. finding a, getting that with uh, LTI on it's kind of a it's hard, not an easy proposition. Yeah, the, not whereas, very cost effective one either. Whereas eight ninety, he can get it with a with an LTI, so he's oh, yeah. cool. laughing there. So yeah, but it, yeah. Oh. if you can combine it into the one fleet, then you don't actually have to be concerned. Mm -hmm. So this last group up here is I guess what I would call exclusive ships. So these are these are things that um I don't know, you, you speak for yourself here. What 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 were these to you? Well, I, two of those, I mean F eights, you get them when you get them. Yep. One very big one, the same sort of deal, but uh, it comes with in my case the fleet name or the ship name, TSN Poor Life Choices. <laughs> Which ship is that? Sorry? The 600 guy. Oh, the 600. The 600. <laughs> yep. Um, you know, obviously a Mustang Amiga, which is hard to come by. Yeah. Um, and, and Andromeda. This is a physicalized Andromeda. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. One of the original uh, Rear Admiral packs. Yeah. And yeah. then this one here is a really weird one that I don't even know if we should publicize this one because if a CIG find out no. about this one, it might be a bit weird. But do you? That's uh, that's just that's one we don't talk about generally speaking. But I do enjoy freelancers for a kind of a semi-small dayly-ish driver. Yeah. yeah. That's one you got a good saving on. So yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, let's just say this one came at fifty percent off, and we'll leave it at that. And I think you can figure it out from there. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that is a bug. We'll leave it at that. I think I've said too much already with that. But yeah. Probably is, yeah. Yep. But uh, yeah, very interesting. Right. So with that, uh, that that's the packs we're dealing with and the situation we had. And so from there, we move on to. Agra and mine's kind of solution for this. So Agra, do you want to kick us off here, man? So the key thing is melt everything by the uh, Wing Commander pack because when we were looking at the ships, he said, I've got about 35 ships, 37 ships I want to move into. 
Yep. And there were 35 ships in the Wing Commander pack that he didn't want. Um, and so it makes sense because you can't get an M outside, can't get an Idris M without being in the pack or without paying $6,000 in the yeah. very market to get one. Um, We're paying it, like 17 or 15. Yeah. yeah. So, so you're or, or going up to the, the, the next huge mm -hmm. pack. So yeah. modifying this pack becomes the cheapest way to guarantee the M. Now, I know one of the things you were talking about when you talked about the M is, or this pack, was that the actual savings on that pack was, is, when you do the calculation, was only like 1%. And that was one of the... Yeah, that's charitable. You were looking at getting rid of that pack because the savings were so, so small and then trying to get bigger discounts on the other packs. But as you start looking at the cost to replace that Idris M, the value, the, the, the hidden value of that pack or the hidden discounts on that pack suddenly become significantly greater. And as you CCU those ships that you want into, the, into those individual ships, you've got the option to bring that, to increase the yeah. discount you're getting on that pack. Where it um, became clear for me, Agrid, in that process you're describing was when he kind of said, this is how many ships I kind of want to get. Mm. Um, and, and if you kind of go back to the original one here, you can kind of see that there's, there's quite a few ships outside that pack, right? Uh, but what it was for me, the, 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 the turning point where it clicked for me, where I went, shit, Agrid's right again, God damn it, uh, was when he, the, there's essentially 32 LTI tokens in that um, Wing Commander pack. And he mm. basically had 40 ships that he was looking at outside that pack. So basically it just became very clear, right? Let's take those 32 and build CCU chains mm. for the rest of them. So yep. yeah, and, and turn them basically, they'll all become much bigger ships. So a lot of these smaller ships um, will be moving into things like, but these are the ships that you want here. These are yeah. becoming the ships. Those, that wanted. What those smaller ships end up being is me pulling out some uh, old, very you know cheap LTI tokens, yeah, and putting those to that. Yeah. So yeah. And so, so I think value-wise, uh, the oh, let me check my little thing. Let's see where the actual cutoff line is for what's in the you know actually in the pack. But, you know, there was, uh, there was a, Mantis, actually. Well, well, rather than go into that detail, it's, it's keep it simple. There's yeah. about eight ships outside that pack, right? So again, uh, using the individual ones that you got left over, you, you, he's got plenty of LTI tokens. So it's it's just essentially rolling uh, the ones he wants into the pack and and consolidating. So you're not stuck with all these smaller ships. Now again. Um, as I said to Agrid, this is a very top end of town uh, scenario, mm -hmm. but it, it is now. Strategy, another thing that me and Agrid and can add to our toolkit. I thought for the longest time Agrid was crazy. I thought this is never going to work. Packs are a terrible thing. I, I, but again, we found a second person that this works for. So Agrid, it's found a very niche solution to a, a top end of it, town problem. It, it certainly is. If, you're, if you've got lots of credits in game, mm. doing the buy the LTI tokens and do it all individually sometimes works because you can use your credits, but more often than not, to recoup as much savings as you can without putting more cash in, packs become the way. Mm. Uh, but they have their own problems. Yeah. Uh, one of the issues mm -hmm. that I think that any pack has is, is just where to go with the ships. Mm. Now, that Wing Commander pack had a whole pile of small ships that uh, then didn't want, mm. but that had one or two ships that he did want. And so he was looking at he was look, he'd been looking at options of melting that pack and then using a whole pile of his LTI tokens he's got in buyback or in the other packs and CCUing up to them mm. and doing them all individually. But the big problem was how do I get an Idris M? Yeah. Or, or will I be able to get a mm. pack in game to change an Idris, an Idris P into an Idris M? And yeah. in we, the end, it just became keep the pack and... We so spent a lot of things, yeah. lot of time, didn't we, originally, Algrid, actually laying this out into the packs. This was the like the thing because because this is something Stan had done. He had he had them all in Excel sheets and stuff like that. But as soon as we visualized what he had, it it, it just jumped out at you and me, didn't it? Like it, it yep. was really clear. Um, and that's one one of the reasons why we like 
like a lot of people come to us with Excel sheets and we're like, we want fleet images because you can just absorb the entire fleet and very quickly see the solution really quickly. Um, so if you're struggling yourself, I'd say that's probably something to look at as well. Visualize your fleet. Um, and, and one thing we even I talked about you with you, Stan, was if you don't like Excel sheets to um, almost lay the, the CCU chains out in visualized upgrades. Mm was something we went through, Stan, as well. I remember that now. Yeah, so literally put the put the ship you want or the ship you're starting from on the left side of the page yeah. of the fleet viewer. Put the ship you want to go to on the right side of the page of a fleet viewer. Yeah, and all the and then all the little steps, you do the pictures of a ship you're going to. So mm. one of the things we often say, if you're looking at doing a, you know, CCU into a ship that you mm. want, get a CCU from a ship you want. Mm. to the one closest to it that's always available and yeah. buy that and just keep it in your hangar. And so yeah. if you were doing that, you'd have your start ship, your end ship, and the very first one would be that CCU to it. And then every every CCU you add, you put into that chain, you just slot in. And mm -hmm. it could be, you know, you go buy everything with credits and it could be, or you go, oh, there's a CCU that's come on. Oh, that Warbond CCU, that's going to save me 50 bucks on anything that's higher than this. They go, okay, and go there. And it literally then just slotting them in. And every every CCU you add, every wall bond CCU you add mm -hmm. in that pack as you're doing as you're going through the process, that's going to increase that savings mm -hmm. on that wall on that that's a, pack. That's a key thing to highlight to Algorit is the that we've not recommended he apply anything. So mm -hmm. keep this in chains until he's like you know, confident, all right, all right that yep. ship's coming out, that's something I want to look at, then apply it. Because, the, again, the longer he leaves and the more savings yep. he's going to get, um, especially with the amount of money he's already put into the game, yep. he needs to... Like, like I, I know some people have money to throw at this game, right, and they can just keep throwing money at it, but I, I think at some point you have to go, right, I have to be at least a little bit savvy uh, savvy with my money and, and be make yeah. smart decisions, right? Because it's just... It it's makes it's common sense, right? So that's that that's that's what I think he, it'll allow you, him to you, do. Yeah, you want to have you want to you want to support the game. You want to have the ships, mm. but the, there is a point where you go, okay, I support I supported heaps. I still want to do mm. I still want to do this, but how can I how can I reduce mm. that, or how can I maximize what I'm putting in? Mm. Um, and if there's ships you don't want, but there's a and they're in a pack you want. Mm. Why keep the ships you don't want if you can CCU them to something else? And it, so it just it, and it can save you heaps in the long run. Yeah. So this um, javelin two stand. This this is an option, isn't it? That, that's what this is on the page down the bottom because that, you're a little yeah, bit short. Yeah. That basically that basically represents the credit that will be left over after getting everything else. Mm. And you know, again, twist it around. Yeah, and, and one of the reasons, like me and Agra recommend things like this, if you've already spent that amount of money, ships like this are just so going to be so hard to actually grind to get. They are, like, I wouldn't go to a new player and say, hey, go buy a Javelin. It's the best ship in the game to buy because it's going to be so hard to find. That's not what we're saying. Yeah, we're yeah. Saying no, if you, you, are, need a, you need a lot of friends for that. Yeah. If you're a crazy if, person like me or Stan, yeah. and getting a Javelin is a... Yeah, the wise. it's but, well. Let, let me put it this way: if you if if he came to us and all the ships he had were under say two hundred dollars, that's what I'd be recommending. Like roll them all together, because it, it, it's really clear for anyone that's watched us for any length of time. Those ships are like, and it's becoming more and more clear. Like Alvar and I like speculated for years at the start, but as time's gone by, everything we s speculated mm -hmm. has has come to pass. And and same with you know, Hayes when, and, and Dyson back at the beginning, they were all there with us. And as time's gone forward, not everything we've said come to pass, but things like this financially based stuff has really kicked over. And and we had little hints and, and, and tricks of it, that, you know, like we're, things Chris said and other people have said along the way, but they are all starting to very clearly, like 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 the big one with, with that you found out with the Reclaimer and the Vulture. That was speculation mm. for so long, but now it's in the PTU and we can actually see it right in front of us. We guessed around fifteen, I think it was fifteen, I and it turned out to yeah. and it turned out to be sixteen uh, times yeah. more powerful than the Vulture. So so you know, and that are obviously yeah. probably different differentiate between professions, yeah. Yeah, but one thing that I think this shows is. Looking at the, the fleet that Sten's got there, of the ships he wants, 
I don't think there's anything that's been missed out in the in, in, no. in what he wants in the fleet, and he's even got that either as them. Yeah. But by doing the consolidation and folding everything back into the wing command pack, yeah. Sten's just said he's now got credits enough to afford, or will have credits enough in left over to pick up that yeah. javelin. Um, so yeah, it's a, kind of... it's a really weird consolidation, isn't it? Because it's like that whole pack has kind of got bigger. And what I mean bigger is the ships have physically got bigger, but also there's just so much overflowing consolidation that you've got a whole javelin that's just overflowed out of that, which kind mm -hmm. of is a bit... It, it, it seems... That's, that's not the most um, crazy path. I had another one where mm -hmm. you know, let's say there's enough to pull that Idris out of my uh, buyback as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So but that so, that that would require a little bit more CCU um, luck, if you will. Well, well, coming full circle then, because one of the things that was you were literally looking at just melting and buying it all, like melting the whole pack at one mm -hmm. point, weren't you? So now we've kind of yeah. approached this. Uh, can you do you see that this is the better way forward, or, or what's your take on it? Oh yeah, yeah, no, it's it's the one that gets the uh, at least in my case gets the most extra out of it. Yeah. I, bang, I did try to uh, kind of envision some of that other stuff. Yeah. You you call it bank for buck? Okay, cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. All right. Um. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. This this one specifically is the best um, bang for buck. But like I said, the one I can get more out of technically would require a lot more. So yeah. it's not not the greatest. And option. this this also, as Agard would point out, uh really he avoids a lot of that f5 stuff doesn't he Agrid? so um it's a lot less stress um the, 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 there's nothing i think when we went through it all there was nothing that wasn't every day available ready at one of the aies or invictus like the, that the, there's no limits on the stuff that he needs to get so it literally it, it all those hard to get ships are in the pack um i think the only one is the javelin uh, literally, so um, or is yeah, 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 the only one's the javelin. So that's the only one he has to kind of um, struggle. At if it, he's in the states, so he shouldn't struggle too badly. Yep. Um, and yes, you can see there are two Polaris in that fleet. There yep. are two Hammerheads in that fleet. That because that's what he wants. Yeah. Um, and he, he, you know, he's still spoiled for choice in, in what he wants. Um, and yeah. if there's other ships that come along that he wants, he's got so many buybacks and so yeah. many mm. says you tokens. Yes. Yeah. But he can actually, you know, so many buyback options and LTI tokens, but he can actually pull them out yeah. and actually use those. Or, um, the, and, the, and there are ships too, like he, he got some massive savings because we went through everything. So this obviously takes a long time to go through everything. But I, I remember, like I'm just picking an example. I remember we were talking about the A2, I think it was, and you got this like almost half yeah. price or something like that. So just as an example. Pretty much. It's, yeah. Uh, basically, I mean, it, it's like it's over half if I kind of ignore the Nova that comes with it. Yeah. But it's mid mid 40s or so yeah. with the Nova. Yeah. So. so so, so just saying there's I kind of write I kind of write the tank off as an extra. Yeah, so, so. The, the moving the moving parts there is that there's little oddities that we're not going to go into the detail on, but mm -hmm. a lot of the things that are there because he got big savings and, and stuff like that. So yeah, and, and also to keep the ships that he wanted and, and things like that. So it's really hard to take the amount of time that we spend on something like this and condense it into a single episode. But what, me and I are always trying to look things for people to learn from, right? So the mm. takeaway from this is if you are a top end of towner, there are other strategies now that I've been molded by our grid. He is, he has convinced me of, and I think it is, uh, yes, Finally. Uh, two points to our grid, uh, to, two points to Gryffindor. <laughs> our grid, uh, our grid just got to get one more and he's, he's got a pattern, but, um, yeah. It, it, we'll beat you yet, Slytherin. Yeah, 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 that's it. Oh, Slytherin, right? I thought it was a Hufflepuff, but no, it's fine. Uh... No, well, you're Slytherin. You're Slytherin. <laughs> I'm Gryffindor, you're Slytherin. Right, okay. So... All right. No, that's fine. It's, it's... <laughs> I'm not a bit of an everybody person at all, so it's fine. Yep. All right. Um, I guess, is there anything you would like to hear from people in the comments uh, back about your fleet, uh, Stan? That's, I guess, what I'd put to you. What is there anything you'd like to hear back? I I have no idea, but I'm sure somebody will have some suggestions on what I'm missing. <laughs> so Yeah. Um I, I always always listen to that. That or somebody's gonna have some comments about that galaxy that's still sitting there. Yeah. 
it's, it's it, it, again it, it, when when someone's got so many ships it doesn't really become it, it's different from like the the other episodes do because we, a lot of the stuff is like what gameplay you want it's focusing in on trying to get those pivotal ships that you want but when you've kind of got every gameplay covered it, it really is like agra said it, it comes down to a pure bang by buck uh bang for buck dynamic and 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 trying to savvily or smartly get the most and then if you want to make changes like what you're doing it it, it yeah it's mm. it's more economic based is what i'm saying in short i guess is, is how mm-hmm. i put that um agro is anything it, you would... go ahead yeah it's more spreadsheet based at yeah. some point yeah. yeah anything you'd like to hear in the comments agro yeah, have we led him down a garden path? Are there ships? Are there ships we are we've missed? Mm. Um, what reasons do you think yeah. um, they've missed? What what sort of, give a give a reason why you think the missed ships yeah. are so important to have? Yeah. So um, so so I think the thing I would add to that, Algrid, is because like like the ships that are there and 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 the one that I'm kind of vaguely going off because there's too much to go over is is that a lot of the ships that are there are the ships that he chose, right? They're ships that he wanted, right? Um, and we went through all the gameplay things with him, but they're the ones, so it's he, it's very much a personalized to him yep. thing, but I can't go, like, it would take us an hour to go through all yep. this, at least, like, I, I, all the reasonings. I think I think the takeaway that I got from this is people often say we, all the fleets are always the same, we never personalize a fleet, but I think this is one, this, this I think, shows we do try to personalize every fleet to every individual oh, yeah. um, and, and help them mm. sort out their problem, you know, and, and give them, a, I suppose, a sounding board that helps them mm. sort out their, their issues rather than, yeah. you must do this, otherwise we can't go down. Yeah. You know, that type of thing. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I don't think we've ever not customized it. In fact, you know, the, there's people that I know that have come along and we're at the end and like, there's people who've gone and gone, you're not looking for a fix my fleet, you're looking for this. You know, uh, and I'm thinking of several ones that we've done in the past where we've just said, that's not what you're looking for. You're looking for something else, you know. So, um, yeah, it really it really is a personalization. That's what these are. These are, you yeah. know, going through. And we, as as you'll say yourself, Agrid, we don't record every single episode, you know. Like, yeah. I, I think Ashra kind of shows that. That was an episode that we also recorded today. Um, and that'll probably come out in a couple of weeks. There'll probably be a month yep. gap. But, but, but in Ashra's episode, you saw that he came to us, we helped him, didn't record an episode. And then he came back like five years, or four, three, four, four three five years, years later, later and... and then we helped him again, you know? And then we did do an episode because it showed this progression, this refinement. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, all right. With that then, the voice in the void has been Sten. Say goodbye, Sten. Goodbye. Uh, he's been Agrid. He's been Execute. And we're out of here. And we'll get that right one day. Yeah, it's all right. It's a bit of lag. We'll catch you in the next one. There you go.